Today we're going to talk about how we can use a software application called the Nexus Repository to provide us with a mechanism to cache the chocolatey packages that we would ultimately be installing from chocolatey.org. Now the reason that we would want to do that is that recently uh, chocolatey.org uh, instituted a new uh, rate limiting feature. Now this was specifically done in order to ensure that uh, chocolatey.org is always accessible uh, and usable for everyone within the community. Now we already have a policy of excessive usage on chocolate.org so periodically uh, we may uh, temporarily institute a ban on a specific set of IP addresses that have been deemed to be uh, using chocolate.org excessively. So the rate limiting feature is similar to that but it'll work slightly differently in the sense that it will ban a IP address uh, for a period of one hour every time the rate limit has the rate limit has been exceeded. Now those rates are uh, the following. So if you uh, install uh, Chocolatey itself more than five times within a one minute period, uh, you will be rate limited. Uh, and similarly, if you install any packages uh, more than 20 uh, within a one minute period, then uh, again, you'll be rate limited. So the mechanism of using something like Nexus to cache the packages that you're installing means that you can install them as many times as you want once they are in that Nexus repository. Now, the example I'm going to show here is Nexus, uh, but there are other systems that do similar things such as uh, ProGet, uh, Art Factory, uh, and there are likely others as well. But I'm going to use Nexus because it's the one that I've used uh, in the past myself. So on this machine that I've got here behind me, uh, this is just a fresh install of uh, Windows Server 2016. All I've done on this machine so far is I've installed Chocolatey. So I went to the install page and I've copied the, uh, the install command into a PowerShell window and I've installed Chocolatey. And then I've ran the command that was uh, choco install Nexus repository. So what that's done for us is it's downloaded and it's installed Nexus. And what it's telling us here is that this is the URL that that Nexus server is now going to be available on. And it's also telling us the admin username and password. Now, obviously, uh, once you've got this set up, you're probably going to want to change that uh, username and password because you're, you don't want to use the default. So let's go ahead and open that uh, URL that it told us about. And well, I'm then going to log in as the admin user. So I'm going to go ahead and head up here and I'm going to say admin and then the password. And if we look at what we've got out of the box, uh, if I go into settings here and click on repositories, then you'll see that some repositories have all, already been set up. Now, Nexus is comes with the ability to have multiple different uh, repository types. Uh, NuGet is one of them, obviously. That's what both NuGet and Chocolatey use. Uh, but it also comes with the ability to have Maven repositories. Uh, let's just have a quick look to see what types there are here. So if we go into create repository, you can create a Bower repository, a Docker repository, Maven, NPM, a raw uh, repository. So that's just any file that you can serve up, uh, RubyGems, and then Yum. So you've got lots there. Now, what I wanted to show you is back here in the default configuration, what we can see here is that there's already a, a group of three repositories all associated with NuGet. So this, this setup for NuGet is essentially the same thing that we're going to set up for Chocolatey. We're going to have a proxy repository that is looking at chocolatey.org. So anytime we, we attempt to install something that uh, isn't available in our Nexus repository, then Nexus is going to reach out to that upstream repository and it's going to pull that package down for us. Uh, the other one, it's a hosted NuGet feed. So what this is, is this is your place for pushing your own chocolate packages. So if you've created your own chocolate packages that aren't available on chocolate.org, uh, you're maybe using them internally, uh, this is a hosted area where you can put those packages uh, and store them. Uh, the other one is a group repository, and all that really does is commingle some other ones, some other feeds, some other sources uh, into one so that you can just have one URL that you need to direct people to, but you're actually c uh, combining the packages that are available on each of those feeds into one. So we're going to go through that exact process for uh, Chocolatey. So we'll start off with creating a proxied yeah, new get repository. Uh, so we'll call this chocolatey proxy 
and into there I'm going to put the URL of the chocolate.org. So that's just chocolate.org slash API slash v2. And I'm going to leave everything else uh, as default. I'm going to click uh, create repository. And then we'll create another repository, which is going to be the new get hosted variety. So this is going to be where we can store our own chocolate packages. Again, I'm just going to leave the rest as default. And then the final repository I'm going to create is a uh, new get group. And we'll just call this one chocolate group. And I'm going to put into there the proxy one that we created and the host the hosted one that I created. I'm going to go ahead and click create repository. So now what we've got, if we click on this, is a URL for a, a URL that we can use as a source for chocolatey uh, that we can then install from. So if we go over to our PowerShell window here, and I'm just going to clear this one out. So right now, if I run the choco source command, chocolatey comes out of the box with that uh, community feed already there. So it's already configured and set up to uh, pull packages from that community feed. So for what we're talking about here, we actually want to stop using that as the default source. So if we uh, type the choco source command again, uh, this time with the help, we can scroll up and we can see what op operations we can do here. So really what we're talking about here is I want to remove that uh, chocolatey feed. So I'm just going to do choco source uh, remove and then that's remote. I'm going to say remove the name of chocolatey. So that will remove the source with that name. And if I run the chocolate source command again, we'll see that we no longer have any sources. And if I scroll back up, uh, we can see that well, there's also an example here of how we can add a source. So that's what we're going to do this time. So I'm going to go ahead and do choco source add. We'll give it a name of uh, Nexus, uh, and then we'll give it a source of what I've got on my clipboard, which is that uh, chocolatey group that we've just created. Now, if we do uh, choco source list, it will list out that we've now got that uh, Nexus repository there for installing packages from. Okay. So if we go over to our repository browser viewer within Nexus, this time we're going to click on browse and we're going to click on that chocolatey group, then it's telling us that there are no component assets found in the repository. That's because there are no uh, packages in that repository just now. Um, but what I said was if we attempt to do an installation of a package that doesn't exist in that repository, then the proxy will reach out to chocolatey.org and pull it down and make it available uh, within that repository ready for installation. So uh, the example that I'm going to want to use, because I'm going to uh, use this as uh, a later part of the demo, is I'm going to, I, I want to install Visual Studio Code. So the current version of Visual Studio Code is uh, 129.1. Uh, so if I go down here and I do a choco install, I type it correctly, try that again, choco install VS Code, and I'm going to want to have the version 129.1. That's the current one, 129.1. So if I go ahead and run that command, then uh, the initial request for that package is going to go to my source that I just created, which is our Nexus repository. Uh, it's going to attempt to find those packages in there, and it's not going to be able to find them. So then the proxy within Nexus is going to reach out to chocolate.org, and then it's going to pull those packages down into that Nexus repository uh, and cache them there. So the next time I run Visual Studio Code uh, installer uh, through Chocolatey, it's not going to have to reach out to the internet anymore. So you're not going to be subject to that rate limiting uh, if you're installing VS Code on uh, lots of machines at the same time. You've pulled it down into your own environment, your own organization, and you have it there ready for installation. So if we jump back here into Nexus and do a refresh, we'll see that we've actually got a few things in here now. Now that's because the Visual Studio Code chocolate packages package has some dependencies. So the, the proxy caching that's happening is it's actually pulling those dependencies down into this local cache as well, ready for installation uh, the next time that you need it. Okay, so that 
in just a few minutes is uh, how you set up and configure a Nexus repository to cache all of your internal uh, packages that you want to use. Uh, and as a result, you won't be subject to uh, the rate limiting that we've instigated within chocolate.org because everything will be local, local into your environment. So the other thing that I wanted to show you is how we can actually use uh, the uh, hosted feed that we created as well. So let's say that you have your own uh, chocolate packages, you're creating your own internal packages and you want to host them on this feed as well. So what we want to do is we want to uh, create a package and we want to push it up into this repository uh, ready for installation. So what we need to do uh, out of the box, uh, the Nexus uh, repository doesn't come with the necessary uh, authentication uh, can automatically set up. So the one that we're interested in, I clicked on Realms there. I'm going to click on this uh, NuGet API key realm, and I'm going to add that into the active list. So what this is going to do is then it's then going to associate uh, an API key with a user that I can push with. So I'm currently logged in as admin. If I go up to there and I look at this uh, NuGet API key section, and I put in the password that I was given again, this is the API key that I can use for pushing packages into that feed. So I'm going to click on copy there. And I'm going to go back to chocolate. So I'm going to run the command, the chocolate API key command. So this is the command that would allow us to uh, store uh, an API key uh, in the system so that we can, uh, uh, when we push to a source with that uh, key, it'll, it, we wanted to put it in. It'll automatically uh, pull it back again. So I'm going to want to do uh, the API key uh, with the source and then the key command. So I'm going to do choco API key. Uh, the source is what I've got. The source I'm going to have to go and find. Uh, but the key uh, is what I've got in my clipboard just now, which is that. If I go back to our Nexus repository and I look at the settings and the repositories, then this hosted feed, which is this one, is this is the URL that I'm going to push packages into. I'm going to go ahead and copy that and into this uh, command, I'm going to put that source. There we go. So that's now added. And if I run the chocolate API key command again, we should see that we've got one uh, authenticated uh, source ready for pushing to. So what we want to do now is we want to uh, create a package. So let's go and uh, create a directory for doing just that. So I'm going to type that with uh, I'm just going to create one in the temp folder and then I'm just going to cd into that temp folder and into here I'm going to open Visual Studio Code. Now I don't have Visual Studio Code in my profile yet um, so I'm just going to close and reopen that uh, PowerShell window because it's, uh, it was a fresh installation so let's just go back into that temp folder one more time and then I'm going to open up code to go to there. So what I'm going to use within Visual Studio Code is the uh, Visual Studio Code extension for Chocolate, uh, just to show you how that can work. Now, everything I'm going to show you here is capable at, you can do it all at the command line if that's what you prefer. I just wanted to show you that it's also possible, uh, the workflow that I'm going to show you is also possible uh, within an editor such as Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to uh, click reload here. And now I have the uh, extension available available to me. So if I go into the command palette and I type chocolate or choco, then I'll see what uh, uh, commands I have available. So I'm just going to use the create new chocolate package and I'm going to be really imaginative and I'm going to say that I'm going to create a package called test package. So what that's going to do is it's going to scaffold out a, an entire chocolate package, including lots of uh, readme instructions on uh, what you need to do to set up that package to make it do the installation of the uh, things that you want. Uh, I'm just going to delete all of those files because I don't actually want a chocolate package that does something. I just want to show you how we could push it to a feed once we have it set up. So I'm just going to delete everything but the new spec file and the chocolate installed up PS1. And into the, in the PS1 file, I'm just going to write out uh, this application was installed. And normally, obviously, within here, you would uh, add the URL for downloading an MSI or an EXE. You would provide the silent arguments to get it installed, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so for me, I'm not going to do that just now. 
Uh, but the only thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change this version number to give it a valid version number so that when I create the actual uh, nut keg, uh, I'm, that I will have a valid version in there. So all I've done in there is I've changed that version number and I've got a chocolate install PS1 file that has actually nothing in it. So if we go back up to the command palette and I say uh, pack, now that I have the source files, I can say there's a new spec there. I'm going to pick that one and it's uh, I'm not going to provide any additional arguments, but from there it's going to create the, the nut keg, the new package, which is what we actually want to push onto our feed. So back up to the command palette one more time, uh, type choco. Uh, I've then got an option to say push chocolate packages. So I'm going to say I want to pick that one, I want to push that one, and what it's showing me now is it's now showing me that uh, API key that I have stored within my uh, chocolate configuration. So I can just select that and say I want to push to that destination, and then again I don't want to provide any additional arguments. Uh, and what we'll see here is that it's then successfully pushed that package to that repository. So if we go back to our Nexus repository, and we go back to uh, the browse section and we look at that chocolate hosted feed there now is that test package that we've just created and we've pushed onto that feed ready for consumption and if we go back again to the top level uh, where we look at that chocolate group then we'll see that test package also available in there because of that remember that uh, group feed that we created was the co-mingling of both the proxy chocolate.org feed and also the internal hosted feed that we created as well. So now if I go back to my command line and I say choco install test package uh, without any additional information, it's going to reach out to that uh, group feed. It's going to see if a package with the name of test package is available there. It's going to find it. And then what we're going to find is that here is the output from that uh, amazing installation that we created which was just to write out that this application has been installed. Uh, so hopefully this uh, very very brief introduction into uh, Nexus repository has been helpful. Uh, it's certainly a very uh, simple way to set up a first level cache of the uh, packages that you need to use within your environment or within your organization and it removes that one other potential uh, problem uh, where, for instance, uh, it does happen, chocolate.org sometimes isn't available. We, we run into issues in the same way that NuGet and NPM does. Uh, we, we try our best to always be available, but we can't guarantee it. And we actually, there's, there's multiple disclaimers on the website that says uh, you shouldn't take a direct dependency on this if it's uh, system critical. Um, so we would encourage you to use things like uh, Nexus to shield yourself from those potential uh, external factors that you as an organization or as an individual can't account for. So that's just a level of risk that you need to accept. Uh, and this is one mechanism that would allow you to uh, shield yourself from that. So hopefully this has been useful. Uh, reach out if you've got any questions about any of this or there's other things that you want to see. Uh, and we can definitely look into getting those things uh, put in place for you. Thank you very much.